construction. So in this position right here, uh, I can do the, the total translation. So now that's just a total translation, okay? And, and uh, using my thumb as an arthrometer, I can say, pulling straight ahead, and I'm controlling it straight ahead, that we've got uh, five millimeters of motion, plus or minus. Now, I'm going to cut this short by not doing both legs at the same time, but uh, we call that five. Now, the second part of this, though, is to blot the one side and shift the axis of rotation. So now, uh, going back to the old anterior medial, I've got the lateral side blocked. So it, the lateral tibia cannot rotate, or translate, I'm sorry, translate on the femur. Now, I'm just pulling external rotation. And I'm measuring with my thumb the number of millimeters that the tibia comes out from underneath the femur. Now, that's giving me an idea about whether I want to work on the posterior oblique ligament in, in reconstruction. It also gives me an idea about the competency of the meniscus, the meniscotibial ligament and the radial collagen tie fibers. So here I'm getting, whereas I've got five millimeters here, now that I've blocked this side, I'm really only getting about three millimeters here of uncovered. So certainly it's, we're relatively competent on the medial side. And then reversing that, uh, his lateral side, I can't even move it. It's rock solid. So if somebody said to me, would you do an iliotibial band augmentation to the ACL, I'd say, well, no, this is it. Now, the three different positions, this being position number one, uh, are additive information. It's not like that's the final answer. But now I know that anterior, posterior, anterior medial, anterior lateral. That's the old thing. And with the leg hanging, it does help to maximize your ability to pull. You okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Now let's go to the Lachman position. So let's go right here. Right in the mine or yours? Mine. They're mine. They're mine. <laughs> uh, that, that's no. It doesn't make any difference. So again, I'm not trying to do a diagnose, a diagnostic test. I'm just trying to put together the information to link the uh, the details of translation and rotation. Again, I'm working up the pivot shift. Now, as I said, and Chris has got exactly the right size knee. This is too big a knee for my hands to do a translation test on. What would I measure? <laughs> what would I measure translation with? I don't have any free appendages here. So all I can really do, and somebody grabbed it earlier, all I can really do is sort of give an end, end point here. And I think the end point is important. So I'm really holding this stable, and I'm actually just dropping the, dropping the femur on the tibia, looking for an end point. But there's nothing left to measure the millimeters of translation which are important. So that's the reason that the supine Lachman is not nearly so accurate as the prone lock. So let's turn over and let's do the prone lock. Now, this, this, came, a, this came from Al, Alan Apple, uh, editor of the British Journal of Bone Joint. In his words, the most powerful opinionator or maker of opinion in orthopedics. Okay, in this position right here, number one is both hands are free. I can vary the amount of flexion. 20 to 30 degrees is not always the optimum amount to get translation. And gravity is in my favor. The femur is fixed here. So, uh, and these are my arthrometers. I've got 10 fingers here to measure translation of the tibia on the femur. And furthermore, I can get a, I can back the knee up so I know that I've got a fixed starting point. Uh, so I'm backing it up, and then I'm just letting it fall forward here. And I can measure the same thing that actually that I measured in the other position. He's got a lot of anterior medial laxity, because I'm now I'm actually prejudicing the medial side. Now I'm blocking the medial side and doing the lateral side. And I'm not fixing the lower leg. The lower leg is free to rotate in my axilla here. So this position is, for the prone Lachman is a huge bit of added information to the supine Lachman unless you've got enormous hands. So gravity's on my side, the femur is fixed, I can change the rotation here. Uh, in a way, I can do the dial test in this position. 
So I'm getting a huge amount of uh, information about the posterior medial and posterior lateral structures from this, from this position here. So now with that information from the hanging position, this position, now I'm ready to summate it with the pivot, pivot shape. So let me get you turned back over again. So this obviously is not an on the field exam. This is obvious. Sean Brown, I agree with you. On the field, it's, it's the lock, yes or no, real quick. But uh, we now got a complicated problem. And now I'll put it all together with the summation of translation, rotation, and pivot shape. So just a couple of things again. Starting slow, I do believe that the acceleration is important. Uh, patient relaxation is important. Sometimes I can't get that. Chris, why don't you wait just a little bit more? Just maybe over the right. So Charlie, Charlie Brown, I love noise flexion external rotation in the office. Now this is, but this isn't the maximum area under the curve. This is just whether we have a pivot shift or not. Now, the advantages of this position are both hands are free. Uh, I can do axial loading. I can do a lot of different valgus maneuvers here. And the lower leg is free to rotate. That is really a critical, Andrew Amos, as you taught me, a critical part that one of the limb segments is free to rotate. So this test has got a lot of merit just as a screening test or the diagnostic test for the ACL right here. And it's that easy in the office. But, but now I want to really maximize this uh, mountain, shape of the mountain, total area under the curve. And this is where I think uh, LOSI has helped us a huge amount. And I don't do this just a classic LOSI test. But in other words, I want to do abduction and adduction. I want to change the tension of the other the other band. I want to change the amount of valgus force and I want to change the axial loading as I go through a range of motion. So it's an infinite examination. And I'll just start wherever it's sort of easier to start. So just for starters, and this is my arthrometer right here. So with starters, I'll just sort of start off slow like this, very slow. Internal rotation, external rotation. I'm just looking for the maximum amount of displacement. Trans translation plus rotation. And then I'll come into a little bit more abduction to release the iliotibial band. And again, external rotation, internal rotation. And sometimes, amazingly, when you put the iliotibial band under tension, it changes the whole test by going into adduction at the hip. So here. So Chris on this knee doesn't have a pivot shift. But we've been able to do it. And really, if I really want to get into an under anesthesia, I get this elbow behind my 170 puny pounds and uh, really go into it hard like this. Chris, thanks for relaxing. I, pre I appreciate your relaxation. <laughs> so that gives me the area under the curve. Let me ask you to flip around, though, and give me